Hi guys, it's Andy the GD Script Dude with another video. And in this one we will be looking at State Machine, a simple way to implement it for complex decision making in your logical code. In this case I've implemented a function which is to do with routing wires in my scene which is like a it can be a complex circuit of uh, of uh, sim symbols that are connected with wires between various points. The wires have uh, starting pins and ending pins and some pins are vertically orientated and the other pins are horizontal. So we enter this routine called this function called a root a wire with a reference to the actual wire that has been routed and then we set up some variables to start with to make it easy to reference in the, the code below. So V1 means uh, it's going to be true or false if the starting point pin is vertical or not. So we, we get this property of the starting pin. If it's vertical, it will be true. So V1 means is it is the starting pin vertically oriented like we were going to go up or down from it or is it horizontal so we're going to go left or to the right as we root our wire now v2 is the end point so it's similar there like is the end point vertical or horizontal and then a is the starting point and b is the end point of the wire the connecting wire I could probably show you what it looks like. So if we quickly zoom into the game and we go to uh, 3 to 8 decoder, you can see these are the what we're talking about. We've got these parts and there's a wire starting from somewhere like that, going to a point and going up, going across and ending at a destination point. So this would be like... The, horizontal start and this is the A point and this is the B point both being horizontal and there's other ones where we can't see on this particular one but if we go to uh, what we're we going to look for the toggle for example this is a uh, this has no that one doesn't let's quickly go to another one router test this is where I've tried to create mistakes like I have there these are bugs I need to fix so you can see there's vertical entry points there. That's uh, the the B point, and it's a vertical one. The start point for that is horizontal. And sometimes we have the start point of vertical, end point vertical as well. There. So you can see that, yeah, that's a rough idea of what we are trying to do here. Anyway, back to the code. We've set up these these values that are easy to use like, we, like we've got v1 v2 a and b so remember vertical or not for the start point vertical or not for the end point a the start point which is a, a vector 2 x y coordinate on the grid and then b is the end point and then as we traverse our our points on our line our wire rather we're going to store them as x, y values. And we're going to be using a state machine because it's a we've got a lot of complex decision making to do and we want to know at what step along the way we are and what state we are. So a simple way to do it, the very simplest, is to have a state variable. I'm just calling it s because I don't want to type state every time. And then I'm going to set the initial state to a value of 1. So, and to finish the, the loop, because we're going to be going around the whole circuit, like you saw, the, it could be a complex circuit, we're going to have a variable called routing. Are we routing or not? And yes, we are to start with. So we start off by clearing, the, clearing points along the, the wire and then and then we start the wire by adding the first point, which is the A point, the starting point. And now we enter our router, which is an auto router. So we're going to use the while loop and while routing. 
so it's true to start with of course and then we're going to enter our state machine using the match statements and it's going to have an input of the state and it's going to look for matches to the state and to start with it's state of one so we just type in one here with a colon so the first step is to check if this condition is the line is the wire in a straight going to be in a straight line a to b straight horizontal or vertical if so there's nothing to do there's no routing required so we we set the state to we do that check here and then we set the state to zero which is an easy to remember way to get out of the this finish finish it so the if we look down this list of matching numbers at the bottom we have zero to get out of it and we set our routing state to false so the the while the while loop says only executes if it's true and the routing is now set to false so it will finish if we do a code collapse by clicking there you can see that it doesn't do anything there it'll just exit and then it'll add the final point b to complete the straight line route of this wire and let's expand it again so each of these these uh, conditions like these states i should say they're like one and then we number them you can see it'll gone to 10 there why what happened to two three four well the thing is when you you were doing this it's a good idea to have a lots of uh, big spaces increments between each state number because you we don't know initially how many states we need and then if suddenly we think yeah we don't need any more it's definitely going to go from one to two or three and so forth but suddenly you eventually you're going to find it oh yeah i forgot something i got to insert another state in between so therefore i can have a, if i've gone one to ten it's easy to put in three four five six seven states for example that is the the, the idea behind this and indeed I do later you can see I had 30 there for that state and then oh I needed some more 32 34 36 then one I just wanted to get out of all this stuff and right to the end somewhere so I oh, put 200 in so it doesn't matter they're just numbers so anyway hopefully that's not too confusing anyway we started with state one we went in here state one we matched it the yes state to one and then we did our if else all of these have if else is in so that we don't complicate it with the lf and stuff like that the if you need more than one decision to make then you should uh, just change the state like we simply do here we go s equals zero to finish or we go s equals 10 to go to the next state so what this does it this is a while loop right so after this one there's nothing more to do in this state of one but we've now set the next state to 10 so it goes around the loop and it matches again and it comes here even though it's the next line by chance so in state 10 then it checks this value of v1 is the starting pin vertical if so it does this stuff you know it sets the the x coordinate to the the starting pins x value and it sets the next state to 20 which is somewhere down there and if not if it wasn't v1 if v1 one wasn't vertical it's horizontal so we go else we're going to do something else where we set x to some other point and then we go to that the next state like 30 and we go through this it just keeps going round and round until we exit to the state of zero so it allows us to do pretty complex stuff this is going to go around and jumping around with the it'll change states and then it'll do something and then it go if this or else that and change states and so forth this is how we implement a very simple state machine but it is very powerful and easy to debug and to trace through it
by hand even you know you could you can like go in and if I see visually some problem I can easily go in here and trace through it like I started with the horizontal one so it will be that one and then I'll go to state 30 and it does this but if if the final destination is vertical then I know it went to 32 the state 32 and so forth now later once this is all like working very nicely it'll be, be pretty cool to have more meaningful enumerations for these so you could use enums instead of 10 you say this is whatever it means in in terms of an enumeration value rather than just a number so hopefully you found that interesting and this is a tip of how to write kind of complex code that is easy to debug 